Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today we'll be adding health bar to the health system we created in the last tutorial. Let me start by giving you a small tip. If your health bar is something a little bit more complex than a simple rectangle, it's good to divide it into three layers. Foreground, the actual content of the bar and the background. Then save or export all of them into individual files with exactly the same dimensions. This will make your life much easier later on. As you see I imported all three layers into Unity. All of them have the texture type set to Sprite 2D and UI. Now I click the right mouse button in the Curry window, go to UI and select Canvas. Beautiful. I double click it to focus on it. Then I click on it right mouse button and create new empty object. I call it HP bar. I would like to see the object in relation to the whole canvas so I enable gizmos. Then using the inspector I change the anchor point, pivot point and position of the game object. I can do it all at once by holding shift and alt when clicking on one of the options. Small recap. When you change the position of UI element, you do it in relation to a specific point on canvas. This point is called anchor point. You can set it conveniently by clicking on any of those options in the inspector. If you hold shift while doing so, you will set also the pivot point. All the UI element transformations are happening around it, for example scaling or rotation. Then when holding Alt, you can also automatically adjust the position of the element. Once again I click on the canvas and change its UI scale mode to scale with screen size. And then I adjust the reference resolution. This will ensure that the size of the health bar will be scaling together with the game window. Now I click on the health bar object and adjust its size and position. Now it might be tempting to just drag and drop the image onto the canvas. Unfortunately this will not work. Instead of creating UI element for us it will create a regular game object with sprite renderer. Instead of that we have to create UI image. We can make it occupy the whole parent element by selecting the right anchor preset while holding Alt and Shift. Then we change the source image to the background one. Now I'm repeating all these steps for the foreground. And because the images have exactly the same size, they fit perfectly. Inside our health bar I create empty object and call it HP bar mask. I move it to be between the background and foreground and stretch it. Then I add to it the rect mask to the component which I learned about from this amazing tutorial on the Coca Code YouTube channel. Then to that empty object I add another image. I change the image to the red bar and stretch it. One way of handling the value change would be to set the pivot point to the side of the bar and then adjusting its width. But I am not the biggest fan of this solution because it scales the image. Instead of that we'll set the right padding on the rect mask to D, which will allow us to crop the image nicely. I start by adjusting the left and right padding to remove the empty space around the bar. I want to remove as much as possible without actually affecting the bar itself. Awesome. Now inside of our health bar I add also the text, text mesh pro. When you try to do that you'll probably see small pop-up. Make sure to click the import essentials button. Now I adjust the text position, content and font settings. If you would like to preview your work you can do it in the game window. Now I create new script and call it health bar. I assign it to our health bar object. I'm starting by creating four serialized private fields to store the references of different components. Those will be health of our character, the bar's rect transform, the health bar mask and the HP text. Now I'm creating two more fields. First one to store the maximum right mask value and another one to store the initial value. In the start method I start by calculating the maximum right padding of the mask. I do it by subtracting from the full bar width the initial left and right paddings. Unfortunately as the padding of the mask is stored as vector 4 we don't have convenient fields to work with, but that's alright, we'll manage somehow. Then I also set the initial text of the HP indicator and set the value of the initial right mask. Now we'll need a method to adjust the width of the bar. Let's call it set value and make it have the parameter of type integer. The formula to calculate the width will be the new value of HP times the maximum width of the bar divided by maximum HP. 
So in our case, new value times max right mask divided by health dot max HP. Okay, so we have the target width of the bar. Now we need to use it to calculate the right padding of the mask. We add the maximum right padding of the mask to its initial value. And then from that we subtract the target width. Now we get the padding, we adjust its right side and then reassign it to the mask. And the last thing to do is to update the text value. Make sure the script is on the HP bar and fill all of the references. First the health script from the character, then the bar image, the mask and our HP indicator text. If you start the new game and by any chance you use the new input system, you will receive hundreds of errors. In that case, you need to click on your event system and in the inspector click on this magical button replace with input system UI input module. Now the last thing to make it work is to connect it to our health script. I click on the character, I create new actions under the healed and damaged event and in them I invoke the set value of our HP bar. And we are done. If you enjoyed this tutorial consider liking and commenting this video and of course subscribing to my YouTube channel. In the next tutorial we'll add the damage indicators, I hope you are excited. But in the meantime, have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.